the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And they'd like to mention the fact that their product, Wrigley Spearmint Gum, offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint, whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mama Me. <laughs> the one thing I'm like about America is that the songs that they got to hear. You turn on the radio, you hear the jazz, the blues, the swing, the boogie boogie, and the beer ups and the rap. <laughs> and if they even write the songs for people who sell all the clothes, it's a color ragtime. <laughs> Americans they write songs about everything, even about their beautiful cities and states. They got a Santa Louis of blues, the sidewalks of New York, a Missouri Walsh, a Chattanooga Sunshine, a Shoeshiner. And then, I'm a heard that they got a song about a people who's a play cards in a Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's called a Pennsylvania poker. <laughs> <laughs> and but right now, Mamma me, all America is singing a wonderful song. That's the most friendly song I've ever heard. It's called, uh, Come On In My House. <laughs> And the people, people, they're inviting each other to come over to their house. Yeah, because it reminded me of our little town in the Castella Mare, huh? So we was always a have a door open. Anybody could have come in and, 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 and like the song is to say, they could eat the figs and the dates and the grapes. There was a food for everybody. Even when Uncle Pietro's a goat did to come in. We had a tin of cans for him to eat. <laughs> but all that song is, is making me feel so good. And tonight, when I go tonight to school, and when I'm walking, I'm going to be singing. Oh, come on in my house, in my house, I'm going to give you candy. Come on in my... Oh, hey, Astra. Hi, Luigi. Hey, nice to the Astra. How do you feel to business? Yeah. What's the thing you have, good or bad? Ah, uh, business is good. I'm making money, but I don't get a kick out of it anymore. Why, Astra? Why are you not getting a kick? Well, in the old days, people not only bought the fruit, but they come in and talk to me. We'd have beautiful arguments and fights. A man's business was more than a business. It was a place where he could meet his friends. Is, is it no more like that, Esther? Yeah. Now everybody's too busy and worried to be friends. They call up. They order on the telephone. But when they do come in, they say, Hey, Esther, give me a half a dozen oranges, some plums, wrap it up, I'm in a hurry. And I say, Why don't we talk a little? They say, Just give me the stuff, I'm in a hurry. Um, let see, what do you mean, Esther? My best customer, Joe Thompson. You remember what friends we were? Yeah. He wasn't just a customer. He used to come in here and buy. We'd start to talk, and in no time at all, we'd get into an argument. What fights we used to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Once somebody to come into my store tells me I should run a quicker to you, somebody's trying to kill you. That's what I mean. <laughs> it was just Joe Thompson and me discussing world events. But no more, no friendship. That's the trouble, Luigi. It's becoming a dollars and cents world. Luigi, if I had a buyer for a fruit store, I'd take a loss and get out. Oh, no, no, I said don't talk like that. Why not? Once this neighborhood held me like a mother. But now there's no love lost between us. Mama, I think things in such a better shape with you. With my antique shop, I ain't got that trouble. Nobody comes in. <laughs> anybody, Luigi. Ask your friend Schultz. He's got a delicate peasant. He'll tell you. Uh, what's the use to talk? The neighborhood's gone to pot. It's like I always say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. 
All right, class. Attention, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco. Here. Mr. Howard. Yeah. Mr. Olson. Hey, yeah. Mr. Show. Mr. Show. Mr. Schultz, why do I have to call your name twice? That's inflation. <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow poopers. I'm so happy when you smile. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, Mr. Schultz. That's an office calling. You're trying to stop inflation. <laughs> a smile. Be happy. Remember, life is a headache, and a smile is the aspirin. All right, that'll be enough for today. <laughs> now, class, today's lesson was on civics. Who will review for us the traits of a good citizen? Mr. Harwin? With pleasure. A good citizen votes on election day. Yes. He takes an interest in his government and in current events. That's very good. Mr. Schultz, you go on. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> he votes on election day. Uh, uh, Mr. Harwin's already said that. Miss Paulding, just because Horowitz voted don't mean that I can't vote. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Uh, Mr. Basco, continue. The traits of a good citizen. Well, uh, he should have bought his fruits and the vegetables at the master. What? Clark, how can you make up all those silly answers? That's sheer genius. <laughs> That's enough, Mr. Schultz. And as for you, Mr. Basco, your answer was the worst of all. Who is this Mr. Ostro? Well, Miss Pauling, he's got a fruit store on my block. Well, what has a fruit store got to do with good citizenship? Oh, well, it's obvious. If you don't vote on election day, we're going to get lemons in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smile, everybody. That's a terrible joke, but I say it's so cute. <laughs> Just a please. I, I don't think it's, it's something to make a joke about. It. It's something important. It, it's about the good citizenship, and, and to Astro, it's a mean everything. Well, Mr. Basco, just what is the connection between Mr. Astro's fruit store and good citizenship? Well, Miss Paulding, I'm, I'm glad to tell you. It's one thing to know all that's said in the books, but it's another thing to be good a good citizen. To me, good citizen is a man who is a good person. Good people try to do good for other people. It's not just enough to be customers. It's, it's a question to be to be good neighbors. Otherwise, the storekeepers don't care if a neighborhood falls to pieces. And, and what's going to happen to the neighborhoods and to the cities and, and, and throughout the whole country? We're only thinking about the money, not the people. And that's what I mean by good citizenship. Him will put a beard on him, and I would swear that Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I, I'm sorry I criticized you before. Yeah, I'm sorry I made fun of you, too. And I'm sorry I told you not to worry about other people. Well, I didn't say anything, so I got nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what a sore loser! <laughs> Smile anyway, even though what you say is true, Luigi. In my store, don't I see it? People, they come in for a few items. I start to talk about the weather. They say, rub up a salami. <laughs> you know, I, I never got to think about it. But years ago, when I first started on my milk route, people, they would invite me in for a visit. Now everything is so cold that they leave a note in the bottle and, and that's all. Sure, that, that, that's not like it used to be. Well, perhaps it's too late to change things. The world moves forward. No, Miss Bunning, a world that moves around. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's not the forward, it's a backward. I'm going to go around and I talk to everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah, and you'll get finished in January 1960, just in time to hand in the new Zensos. <laughs> Schultz is right, Luigi. The neighborhood is too big. Well, then we make a bigger party and bring the whole neighborhood to us. A party? No, that's good, but uh, where will you find a place big, you know? Right on the street, Olsen. Is it going to be a block party? A block party? It's a wonderful idea, Luigi. But you think this will bring the neighborhood together? Well, it's worth a try, Mr. Harwood. Mr. Basco, if it works, you'll get an A for this month in civics. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Pollinger. And then you're all invited to the black party right outside of my store. All the neighborhood is invited, and can we going to dance and sing and have good fun? Oh, it sounds like it should be a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> ah, that's Luigi. 
you skip one day buying fruit from Astro, and from this he creates an international situation. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Cup of study. And this is what's to happen. Astro Fruit Man is a feel bad because the customers are no longer talk to Schultz is a rap and a salami. I'm a get a in a civic because everybody's a coming to my black party this is Saturday night that they build up in the neighborhood. Luigi, how come when you put together some American words that they come out in a foreign language? <laughs> That's right, listen. Now, now, just a minute. Calm down. Relax. I like it. <laughs> now, you listen to me, my little banana nose. <laughs> First of all, here's a present. Two tickets to the annual restaurant owner's a ball. That's the big affair of the year, Luigi, and I'm giving them to you. To me? That's all right to take it. They're yours, all paid up, free of charge for nothing and gratis. Oh, that's <laughs> How come are you so kind to me? Because I love you, little cabbage bird. <laughs> what? Dance tickets belong to you. Can I return to anybody I went to? Sure. As long as it's my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> I it. Suddenly, I'm, I'm a don't feel like a dancer. Why, you danced with a rosa before? Tell the truth, the little pumpkin of seed eyes. Didn't it feel so bad dancing with a rosa, did it? All night, I'm a to like a sardine and picking a fighter with a web. <laughs> <laughs> that was the night the roses had fallen on me and I'm a broke of three ribs. <laughs> That was your fault. I told you a thousand times, with a rosa, you don't try to lead. I know. You're just a swimmer with a tiger. <laughs> Look, Mr. Smart Alex, all of my friends expect to see you there with my rosa. That's orders. All right, Mr. Scully, I'm going to argue with you. I'm, I'm going to think about it. But the minute I, maybe you're going to help me out with a few You ain't got so much time to think about it. This ball is a Saturday night. Oh, sa- Saturday? Well... Let's go ahead to the blocker party. That's the most important thing to me. To have everybody get friendly with each other. Luigi, how many times I got to teach you to mind your own business, stay in your own little backyard, and keep your nose in your own tablecloth? <laughs> no, no, you're wrong, Pasquale, because even Miss Spalding is agree with me. If the neighborhoods ain't the happy, cities ain't the happy, and that's the goes for the whole country. How come you suddenly become a happiness, a boy? You really want to go around and spread the happiness to start with a roast? But, Granny, she's a doing a hell on spreading it. Ooh, what an ungrady you are. I'll give you two tickets to look at how you act. Yeah, but you tell me I, I could have taken anybody I ever want to. All right, so I gave you the tickets with a little catch. Because, Granny, that's a no catch. That's a trap. <laughs> Come on, Luigi. Forget this a block party. Take a rosa to the dance. You can have a swell tie. No, nothing to do. No, I'm not the one to the dance. Is it that definite? If you don't believe me, here's your tickets back and a goodbye. Ooh, the little pop squeak. <laughs> He's a fixer, me, he thinks. Well, I'm going to fix it. It's a block party, but a good. <laughs> no rosa, no block party. Hello? Hello, police department? Say, uh, if a crowd is going to gather in the street, don't they have to have a permit? <laughs> That's a like I told. Well, you come around at 21 and North Holstead Street a Saturday night to buy an antique shop. You're going to see the biggest crowd you ever saw, and they ain't got no permit. That's a right. My name? Look, what difference does it make, J. Edgar Hoover just calls me X-38. <laughs> no, no, that's no joke. You want to stop the trouble, you better be here. These are the same people that started that tea party in Boston. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to mention that Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is an ideal taste treat to enjoy between meals. During the morning or afternoon, when you get a little hankering for something tasty, slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint into your mouth. 
chew on it and get the full enjoyment of the pleasant chewing and the refreshing, delicious, real spearmint flavor. You'll find that it satisfies you without spoiling your appetite for lunch or supper. So do as millions do. Enjoy chewing Wrigley's spearmint gum between your meals. It isn't rich, it isn't heavy, but it sure tastes good. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, tomorrow's the big night over the block of Paris. And now I'm really see what's to happen to the neighborhood. Lots of people, they don't care about it, but... But anyway, all week I'm running around from a door to door, pushing the doorbell. I'm a feel like Italian a Polar Revere. Luigi, my fellow boobers. Oh, hello, Luigi. Well, uh, are you made out with the food to collect? Luigi, it's the food I collected you couldn't feed a pigeon with ozos. <laughs> Don't care, or they don't want to contribute. Why should I give food? Food. <laughs> well, Jeff Thompson is all the customer who just stopped buying it from him. Mamma mia, did you look the better for the black party, huh? Luigi, don't you worry. I stand behind you with the food for my delicatessen. The salami will flow like lumber in a log jam. <laughs> you can tell everybody, Schultz guarantees each and every person who attends the black party a heartburn he'll remember for me. <laughs> My Luigi. Oh, thank you, thank you, sister. You're really a friend. Luigi, what else is life for? A few friends, some good food, a copy of Esquire when your wife is on vacation. <laughs> smile, I'm on the phone. <laughs> well, well, well. Look who we got here. The old furniture dealer and the antique salami salesman. <laughs> Excuse me, Luigi. I am going out where the air is fresher. When you walk out, Schultz, the air is going to be fresher in the hair. Oh, Why couldn't you fall into a plate of your spaghetti sometimes and join the other meatballs? <laughs> well, I'm I better get out while I'm ahead, Luigi. I feel at the black party and smile. Happy is me, like me. Always laughing, always happy. <laughs> 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 My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> so from now on, I'm going to love a rheumatism. <laughs> I'm going to know when I deal with you. Who's arguing with you? I was a tension, Luigi. After all, I should certainly be at this block of party. I got in my restaurant here 26 years, and if anybody is the head of this block, it's me. Yeah, you're so right, Sir Pasquale. You're the real block ahead. <laughs> That's a funny thing, Luigi. When I say it, it's to come out a different. <laughs> Anyway, Luigi, I'm going to be very happy to be there. That's a nice to say. And, and I'm hoping you, you're going to enjoy your cycle when you see what's to happen. Luigi, when are you going to see what's to happen? Then I know I'm going to enjoy myself. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> When I hear you go <laughs> like that, I know there's nothing to laugh about you. <laughs> well, how do we say? Are you having a nice time? Oh, I'm enjoying myself, Luigi. But say, who put up those detour signs on both ends of the street? Well, it's just as dependent on the way something is along. Exactly. He fell detour with three O's. Well, uh, as long as the child is kind of a bit... That's good. Uh, and Luigi, you, you got the good crowd all right, but uh, there, there is the music. The crowd is getting a little sick, yes, he is. Yeah, I know, I, I know. I was going to ask the pony to bring his club in and some other musician friends, but, but they're going to show up yet. Sure, well, I hope they do, too. Maybe that will get the yoink-yoink thing. <laughs> oh, I know it. 
Hey, what is it? You ever see such a bunch of vultures eating up the food? I guess you, you, you think that they're enjoying themselves? I don't know, Luigi. They just finished a basket of peaches, and now I think they are waiting to throw stones at each other. <laughs> How this neighborhood has fallen apart. You would think the middle of the street is the 38th parallel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm still a terrible heart. My, don't worry, the party will warm up. You see, you see, if you are, Astro is going to light a fire under Thompson. <laughs> but, excuse me, I think I can still sound the salami on my gun. Well, let's not stand around. Let's mingle, huh? And we try to make everybody a friend. Yeah, well, let's just... Let's, uh, I wish you the music was... Is it going to come already? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's not. Hell up, it's so you, you enjoying yourself? Uh, what do you think? Oh, well, by the way, I got a surprise for you. Uh, a section of party who was supposed to go to a section of dance that didn't go. I uh, got a rough of my sleeve. I swear if I'm another step in the party, there's enough sleeve big enough for the hold <laughs> All right, wise guy, I'm going to call her out anyway. Rosa! 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 <laughs> Yes, my little chicken dee. They are not the Luigi. Oh, no, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Hey, Luigi. Look, don't be a ghost. These people don't care. They never get together. You don't spend your time. Why don't you take the rope to the dance before you get into some real trouble? Well, what? Luigi, Tony is here with the accordion and he brought a few friends oh, with him. Oh, oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, hey, Tony. Tony. Tony, come on. Come on ahead, Tony. Come on, bring your friends in here. Come on, make a little room, everybody. What can you do, Tony? That's a good item. Oh, good, good. I, I see you brought to the right the music. Friends, I know it's been... It's been a little bit cold tonight, huh? Get out of here. Now, let's knock off and go home. No, 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 no. Everything is, is going to just to stop and is going to be all right. Sir. Now, music is a hit, and, and I'm going to like to start off with the evening for summer dancing and the singing with a new song, All the Medicines Are Full in Love with You. Friends are listening. And I want you to like a journey in the because that's the idea. All right, so Tony, push up with the screws about <laughs> Come on in my house, in my high house, I'm gonna give you candy. Come on in my house, in my house, I'm gonna give you apple and a plum and a egg, a cut of two eggs. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, in my house, I'm gonna give you a fish and a bass and a gets and a catch. And he buys them from Astro. <laughs> I'm going to give you hey, a wine and a bread and a fish, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house, I'm going to give you a fish and a bread and a fish, sister. Come on in my house, my house, I'm going to give you a fish and a bread and a fish, sister. Thank you, boy. Come on to my store, to my store. I'm going to give you tomatoes, a potatoes, parsnip, a cowsnip, a blue, a parsnip. Hey, what did he get for shimmer? <laughs> Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house. My, house, my, house. my wife has to do bake you up high. And you're going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, every minute. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, come on. Come on in my house, come on. I'm going to give you more of a call. Come on in my house, in my house, come on. Come on in my house, my house, come on. Come on in my house, in my house. 
I'm going to give you veal scallopini and a chicken cacciatore and Luigi. I'm going to give you roaster, too. <laughs> I just got back seven of my old customers. And the returns ain't in yet for me. I'm so happy. Hey, Luigi. Hey, Oscar. That's wonderful. I can see people again. They've been doing all the jet down still, huh? Luigi. Good. He said he was sorry, then I told him I was sorry. You wasn't sorry? Yeah, I didn't tell you, but every once in a while, I was sitting with some bad tomatoes in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> well, and as long as everything is a turn out, the finance is good. Come on, everybody. Is everybody having a good time? All right, all right. Just a minute. Just a minute. Who's Mr. Luigi Basco? Mr. Basco. I'm Officer Hodge's traffic detail. We had a complaint about a block party without a permit. What? Didn't I see you dancing with her? That's right. I had a great time. But actually, you shouldn't have been doing this without a permit. Uh, Officer, your majesty, uh, uh, what's this pedal? Well, it'll be a $2 fine for a person obstructing traffic. All right, I'm glad to pay the fine. Yeah, but there's 300 people here. That'll be $600. What? <laughs> Well, that's the first time the atom bomb hit just one person by himself. Well, I, I don't think I could find anybody. This block party's a great idea. There should be more. Yeah, I more parties. Come, Mr. Officer, you win this for the man. Hey, wait, go to leave, go to leave. Everybody, I feel it's so good. It's just the week of Houston, my roads, I got a suggestion to make. His party was very good, but I know one thing. Everybody's a star. Say, you are not kidding. If I tighten my belt anymore, it's going to go right through me. <laughs> all right, friends, and all I want to say is, uh, come on to my restaurant. Come on, my man, the medical. Come on. Come, come on, on to my The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that it's a good idea to carry a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with you wherever you go. Chew it safe from time to time to freshen up your taste and sweeten your breath. Enjoy a stick while out walking or driving your car. And when you meet someone you know, offer a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint. It's always appreciated. Yes, millions of people carry Wrigley's Spearmint with them during a day because it offers refreshment and enjoyment whenever they want. It costs so little, too. Get a few packages of good-tasting Wrigley's Spearmint chewing gum next time you're at the store. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint chewing gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mac Benoff. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Denman. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conley as Stroke, Jody Gilbert Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Pauly, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Lyon. This is the CBS Radio Network.